Hi, I'm Mike Holt here, MikeHolt.com. It's a little video about not letting a dinosaur teach you how to size circuits for air conditioning equipment. All right, this is based upon Keith Laughlin's article, July 2017, with the International Association of Electrical Inspectors. It's air conditioning equipment installations. All right, Keith, uh, here's a little information about his bio. You can go online and find out about him, but he's uh, pretty well qualified. He is the codes and standards guy uh, for the IAI, and he just recently retired in December 2020. He's a godly man also. What, what this article says that if you take a look at the air conditioning nameplate, and it says that the minimum circuit supply is 24 amps, and the maximum circuit breaker, let's say, is 40 amps. Well, then you can use a 12 gauge wire on a 40 amp breaker. Now, dinosaurs, of course, go nuts about this. That's because they don't understand what they're doing. Okay, so now, sizing air conditioning circuit conductors and short circuit protection devices. And what the article says is that to calculate the minimum circuit ampacity and overcurrent protection device settings on the nameplate, the rated load current is used. So we go to the nameplate and we see that they have rated load currents on the nameplate. And this one here has a running load amps of 18 amperes for the condenser or the compressor and 1.3 amps for the fan motor. Okay, so now we know what we base it on. And then it says sizing air conditioning circuit conductors at 75 degrees C. So that's the topic I'm gonna hit first. And it says, look, Using the information from the AC nameplate that we've seen earlier, determine the minimum circuit ampacity for the branch circuit conductors to the AC unit. Well, what you do is you take the highest rated running load current at 125% and you add the others. Now, Keith had a reference at 430.24, which really applies to motors, and the correct reference is 440.33, just a little typo there. So now looking at the math, we take the 18 amps times 125%, and then we go ahead and add the 1.3, it's 23.8, and we just simply round up. By the way, if I go too fast, put the video on pause, and then you can kind of get your codebook out and watch some of the details, like go look at those references of 444B, 440.6, 440.7, and 440.33. All right, so now what does the rule say? Well, here is the actual copy of the 44033, and I'm not gonna get into the details, but it's what we just discussed. All right, so I just wanna show you the code. All right, now, the value, round to 24 amps, is the minimum supply circuit ampacity stated, the nameplate, and is the required minimum ampacity that branch circuit conductors, and it gives a reference to uh, the code. Since the equipment nameplate includes this value, it's not necessary for the installer or the inspector to perform the calculation. In other words, what we're saying is that, look, the nameplate tells you right here, 24 amps, but you don't have to calculate because the manufacturer does that. So back over here is, now it says, the allowable ampacity for 12, I cross out TW, I'll tell you in a second, Copper conductor is 25 amps. That's why you can use 25 amps. By the way, this article is written based upon uh, the 2017 code, and TW had an ampacity of 25 amps then, but 12 does, not anymore. All right, so now if we go to the code book and 75 degree C wire, we go to 25 amps, we need it 24 amps. And we find out that we can use a 12 gauge wire. Exactly what Keith is saying, 12 gauge wire. Right there is what he said, 12 gauge wire. All right, so you say, well, wait a minute. How do we know it's 75 degrees C? Well, all circuit breakers are marked 75 degrees C. So we used a 75 degrees C column of table 31016 or in the 2020 code. And this is from the UL guide information about heating and cooling equipment that all the terminals for heating and cooling equipment is rated for 75 degrees C. So then we size the wire to 75 degrees C. Now, but if you use Romex, there's a little interesting rule in Romex. And that rule says this, that 33480 says that you base it upon the 60 degrees C column. So 
we can't use 75 degrees C roll max. Even though the terminals are rated 75, we're gonna have to go to the 60 degrees C. So in this case here, uh, Keith didn't have this in the article, we would use 10 gauge wire would be suitable for the 24 amps. Okay, got that worked out. How about the short circuit protection or the circuit breaker for most practical applications? Well, using the information for the nameplate, it says, uh, go ahead and take that current at 175% plus the other loads. Now, if that 175% is not sufficient, then you go with 225% plus the other loads. So this example here, the manufacturer took 18 amps of the com compressor at 225%, which was 40.5, added the fan motor 1.3, which is 41.8, and you cannot exceed that value so therefore, that's why Keith showed to be a 40 amp circuit breaker. Of course, it could be a fuse. And there's that reference on 44022A, um, which is what I'm showing you here, that you can confirm what Keith is saying. So here's your nameplate. Now, but Mike, I thought the maximum breaker for a 12 gauge wire was 20 amps. Yeah, that's what a dinosaur would think. Now, a dinosaur to me is somebody who actually gets information and they still don't believe it, and they stick with their old tribal knowledge. So if you're learning something here and you thought this and you learn it, well, then you're not a dinosaur. But if you still believe after this video that Keith is wrong, you're a dinosaur. All right, but here's what his Keith says. It says the code generally limits the overcurrent protection for 12 gauge wire to 20 amperes, unless otherwise specifically permitted. 240.4G and 240.4G permits air conditioning circuit conductors to be protected in accordance with part three and four of article 440. So then he says, all 12 gauge conductors have an allowable ampacity of 25 amps are acceptable as the branch circuit conductor supplying this unit. So now let's take a look at that. See, this is 240 that 4D that talks about no more than 20 amps on a 12 gauge wire, but it starts and it says this, unless specifically permitted in 244E or G, then you have to comply with that limitation of 20 amps on a 12 gauge wire. But since G has to do with air conditioning loads, then we don't go to 240.4D, I'm sorry, 240, yeah, because it just doesn't apply to air conditioning loads. So what's the bottom line, like Keith says, 12 gauge wire, unless it's Romex, we talked about that, on a 40 amp breaker is fine. But Mike, the wire's gonna burn up. It's gonna cause a fire. You're a dick. Are you kidding me? 125 years, the National Electric Code's been around. Yeah, I think they already know that a 12 gauge wire will comfortably withstand the short circuit event of maybe like about three hundredths of a second. It's fine. By the way, the air conditioner unit itself has individual overload protection. This is short circuit protection. But what about the rule that a 30 amp circuit requires a 10 gauge equipment grounding conductor? Well, kind of yes and kind of no. If you go to 250.122A, you would say, it says here, the equipment grounding conductor shall not be required to be larger than the circuit conductor. So 12 gauge circuit conductors, 12 gauge equipment grounding conductor, 30 amp breaker, and the article was written by Keith Laughlin was right on. Okay, if you're a dinosaur, don't waste your time telling me that Keith is full of baloney. If you didn't know this, then you're not a dinosaur. God bless.